welcome to the Social Monkey number 11. I'm welcoming Nathan Meadows in, our function band member, who's a fantastic drummer, who I've known since oh. so long, so long. So, obviously, thank you for coming on today. How are you doing? You all right? Hey, good, man. Yeah, yeah, really good. Excellent, excellent. Got stuff. coffee? What more could you want? Yeah, the Chocobo coffee. Man United up there? That's right. That's it. The good old days when mm. they used to be good. When they used to be good. Not losing to young boys at Wank Golf. Yeah. <laughs> that did tickle me when I saw the name of that stadium. I was like, Is that, am I reading that right? It's called Wankdorf. Uh, it's, got be, it's got to be Wankdorf from there. Oh, I don't know, but you put it all together, it just doesn't sound right. It's does just it? Wankdorf. <laughs> young, you're Wankdorf young boys. Yeah, that's it. It's not the one. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Cracking start. Yes, absolutely. So, when obviously we were growing up, um, you were a tapper. You were a tapper. And you told a, a very compelling story, if I remember rightly, at school. That you were the third best drummer in Europe. Yes. And you told me it was lies. Yeah, it was all lies. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I but think when when you're young and you kind of yeah, I just yeah, I went for this competition and I won yeah, I was, yeah, third best drummer in Europe. And all the teachers were like, "Oh, really? Are you sure?" I was like, "Definitely." Should we get the evening echo down? I was like, "Ah, don't worry about that. Don't yeah. Ah, just yeah." But yeah, so that was um. Yeah, but it's... do you know what the convincing thing was though? Is that you were that good? Everyone believed it. <laughs> Well, I look back at videos and things like that, and it's just oh shit. Well, when you're first, standards first, now, well, yeah. exactly, yeah. But when you, uh, yeah, it's weird, isn't it? You just look at those. You look at kids, and then we've all got our own kids now, and you just think like some of the lies that come out of their mouth, and you're just like, shut up, mate. <laughs> and then when it was me telling those lies all those years ago, you just think, oh, what, what was I doing? But anyway, no, not thirty-five at all. now, so yeah, exactly. And look where it's taken you, because your passion, even though that little white lie. Has consistently, has <laughs> yeah. consistently, because sh it showed that you really love music. At yeah, school, yeah, yeah. And uh, did you feel that helped you transition your love for music at school into what you do? Absolutely. I think that, you know, playing drums since I was, I don't know, five, six, maybe. I had my first drum lesson when I was eight or nine years old, and then yeah, obviously you get to school. I think like senior school was kind of the the the, the pinnacle moment because you start expressing yourself with music you get to start playing with other people mm. um musically you know and you start forming a little band and yeah so it's yeah this i can't remember the original question but no yeah. it, was, it was it was stemming from the white lie wasn't it oh, I mean, yeah. obviously the progression of obviously starting from school and now everyone noticed that you were talented regardless of how bad you thought you were yeah everyone knew that in our year there was no other drummer than nathan meadows was there no i don't think there was actually no i think i was well, in my year, not our year, yeah, yeah I don't think there was any other drums. No, that's what so, I'm saying. Yeah. So you were head and shoulders above everyone, regardless of the white light. It didn't matter because you were talented and you were good. Yeah. So obviously from when we left school, obviously we've all grown up now. We've all got families. We're all obviously getting on with our work, job, life. So yep. where, your, where your music took off from school, where did you take it from there? So um, I think it was just doing the original band thing. So making bands of my own and just playing dives you know just playing to like your, your parents and a couple of mates and and then yeah I think so when I left school what was it 16 and then you kind of had the college years and then I think it was probably about when I was 20 21 that I started to really think like I really need to start pushing myself but I didn't know really where to look mm. and then someone said about the whole function band thing like playing other people's music so just playing covers you know and I was like nah, it doesn't really but so I, I teamed up with a few friends and their friends and we kind of ended up making this little band and it was I hated it I, I hated it I hated playing other people's songs I hated playing other people's yeah, music and I, I just couldn't and I was like no nah, this isn't for me so then I sat back for a little while and did a few more originals bands and then yeah then an opportunity came up to start the function band thing again, but it was mm. like on a much bigger platform. Right, what platform was that based Well, on so <clears throat> the band that I joined uh, were on an agency. Um, so I, by this point, I was 24, 25 maybe, mm. I think. Can't even remember now. But yeah, and they had a, a bit of a political issue with their current drummer, and he left or got kicked out, whatever. Mm. And then... I was asked to come on board and basically it was just like I got this um, message on Facebook from this guy that I knew that was in the band fast forward 10-15 years he's like my best mate now 
Brilliant. But I didn't know him at the time, really. And he was like, hi, mate, um, we're looking to fill some dates. Uh, if I throw a few dates at you, can you see if you're free? And I was like, yeah, yeah, go for it. And he sent this message through, and I think I was scrolling for about two minutes, just going, holy shit. <laughs> and there was, there was easily 60, 70 gigs that needed covering. I was like, I thought it was a couple. And he was like, no, this is like a permanent thing. We want you to do it permanently. Uh, <clears> but it's gosh. very... It was very like time sensitive. They didn't have time to kind of audition loads of drummers and go, yeah, well, he's not quite as skinny as we like and he hasn't got the right haircut. It was like, we just need a fucking drummer. We just need to get him on now. So, so yeah, so I was like, uh, okay, uh, well, I obviously, and I had my day job and I was like, I need to, I need to um, ask if I can have weekends off. Like, yeah, see what you can do. So I went to work the next day. I was like, right, I need all these Saturdays off. And they just went, no, mate, yeah, that's not no going to happen. Yeah. I was like, well, um, okay. So I went back home, spoke to the missus about it, and she was like, just leave. Just leave your job and just go and crack on. So, I, uh, yeah, it was like the film Yes Man. Hell. It was like, just leave your job and go and do it because the money of the gigs I was going to earn equated to what my day job was. That's amazing. And What's it was like... From the missus? I know, yeah. yeah. Right. Thanks, darling. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, um, but yeah, so I, I I literally handed my notice in at the job, and then I was like, yeah, I hadn't even had an audition, or I hadn't even gone in and played drum with these guys. So I literally handed in my notice, and then went, I hope I can actually still play, like because like to a, a good stand, because mm. I've only been doing like twenty minute, half hour gigs down at Chinneries, you know, playing in front of your mums and your mates. Yeah. And all of a sudden it was like, right, you got to do two hours worth of music. You've got to drive the length and breadth of the country, and it was like. Shit. Just get the culture shot to the road. Yeah. Right, so, so that was it, really. So it was a bit of a learning curve and a bit of a, yeah, a bit of a, bit of a weird thing to do. But that was it, and the rest they say is history. Yeah. Well, I mean, describe obviously what you've mentioned by the length and breadth of the country, because I'm, I'm sure not everybody knows what sort so, of travels and tours <clears throat> you have to go through. Mate, there's there's many a story with regards to being in a function band and doing weddings and corporate events and things like that. But you can literally. If you picture the UK, yeah. that's your territory. So you will literally, but you could be very lucky. Like the other night, there was a gig, uh, I, I wasn't doing it, but there was a gig at um, Apton Hall, which was literally uh, just in Rochford, yeah. which is literally two minutes from my house. And I've been asked to play there before, like with other bands. Like, okay. oh, could you fill in? You know, I was like, yeah, great. And then other times, it's like, oh, could you play um, Cumbria? And you're like, right. That's about eight hours away. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh, man. So, and then... Uh, on top of that, you could be very unfortunate that you could be in Bristol one night, Yorkshire the next night, and Norwich the next night, no way. and then you have to drive home and then go and do your day job the next day. That's dedication for So, uh, yeah, and so that's the thing. That's kind of the the thing with being in a function band is like, it's not just just being in and around Essex or London or Kent. If you, if you get those gigs, you're very lucky, mm. you know. But, I mean, you, yeah, if you put yourself on the map, you, you have to travel everywhere. I can imagine London's quite a h tough nut to crack. Mate, London is shit. I used to think like, like gigging in London was like, you know, you think everyone gets married in all these luxurious stately homes and all these like funky little venues in London you don't even know exist. Mm. And uh, yeah, the amount of times you're looking at your diary and you're like, oh, Yorkshire, Newcastle, oh God. Oh, London. Oh, wicked. Yeah, lovely. And you get there, there's no parking. Anywhere you've got now, you've got a congestion charge, you les this, that, and the other. So you're already like 50 quid out of pocket. And then you get to these venues, and they're like, Right, you're in the so and so suite, and you're like, Right, okay, can we park? And like, no, there's no parking. You've literally got to stick it on the double yellow lines outside the venue, unload all your gear, and then you've got a car to. We did a gig once um, where we we're on some like massive courtyard right near the Gherkin in London, yeah, massive courtyard. And we were like, oh, this is wicked. Like, and uh, they literally opened these double gates. And we started driving in. We've got like a van. Well, we had a van. And uh, so all four of us were in this van with all the gear in it. And we were like, great. We haven't got to find anywhere to park. We can just each pull in. And uh, they opened the gates. And the security guard came out. And he went, oh, no, you can't park in here, lads. He said, you've got a van. And we're like, right. And he said, we don't accept vans in here. So we literally had to park the car, park the van on the pavement March all the gear in, and I'm not kidding, it was I, I just, it was about, it took us about an hour to get all the gear out, upstairs, across cobbled, like, floors as well, so you've got all the cases on, like, wheels, and it was like, dig, 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 dig. Oh, it's just like, mate, this just isn't going to work, 
But you have to do these things because, like, the bride and groom do not care. The bride no. and groom don't give a shit. Your troubles and talks are nothing compared to oh. our special day. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's like bridezilla and all that. But no, I, I, you know. but no it's, it's not that at all. It's just one of those things where I think if I was booking an event, and I've done events, you know, I've did like my wife's 30th and I've done a few events, and I always instantly think of the band first. And I'm like, what's the loading like? Is everything okay? You know, everything else is kind of that because I've been in that situation. So yeah, it's one of those things where, you know, brides and grooms don't care what the loading's like. No, they don't care. They so yeah. So, but it's it's just part and parcel of it, really. And the the, the amount of good things that happen definitely outweigh all the shit things. It's one of those things where you load in and you you get all the gear set up. You're sweating before you've even played a note you're absolutely caked in sweat and you're like oh fuck this <laughs> fast forward four hours and you've got the whole dance floor like singing back here you're like well this is what it's all about yeah you know? and then so yeah that that little inconvenience is like it, it's nothing compared to it it's just one of those things where you could wake up with a headache and you could wake up with a belly ache and you can be like oh i really can't be bothered with today and the whole day just feels like a grind but then as soon as you get on stage it's like everything just pales into it's just that's it's about, magic that's yeah. about set uh, offsets everything. Absolutely, yeah. Or mm. everything else. So, what, what's the what's the most requested wedding song that you've had? Oh, it, there's got to be a few that you actually make that noise every time they ask it. <coughs> so I can imagine there's a few. It's not so much the request; it's just the songs that you have to play over. Yeah, that's over. Because yeah. the thing is, to us, it's like, well, sorry, to the to the people in the room, the clients. They haven't heard any music all day. They probably haven't had a party, especially in these times. You know, mm. no one's had a party for years. That's and right. Yeah. I don't get invited to that many weddings. It's, it's just one of those things yeah. where a lot of my friends have kind of either had weddings far away or I just don't get invited. Um, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. But no, it's um, that was at me as well. By the way, I was invited <laughs> yeah. to mine. I was invited to yours. <laughs> um, but it's just one of those things where, uh, yeah, you're sick of playing those songs day in day out, but people mm. haven't heard. So things like. Mr. Brightside, yeah. Sex on Fire. You're just like, oh, here we go again. Oh, your sex is on fire. <laughs> just, oh. And when you're on day three or three in Cumbria, you're like, fuck this. Fuck this. <laughs> and then you look up and everyone's just bouncing and you're like, fine. You know, it's, yeah. it's fine. I mean, I imagine how like Kings of Leon or um, The Killers feel. That's true. That is true. <laughs> They're probably sick to death because that's like, that's that's what we want to hear. With us, we can kind of go, hey, you know, we'll cherry pick some songs but with them. It's like, we don't care about the last four albums, mate. That's Just it. play Mr. Brightside. It's like, no, I don't no. want to sing and play in it. No, but to be fair as well, with the uh, with the consistent song requests, it sort of resonates what sort of... It's an easy sell for you as well. Yeah. Because if you're realising that the same amount of songs are being requested, you've got, we can smash that and yeah. smash that. Nothing, have you had any unfortunate ones where they've gone, can you play this? And it's like, oh, fuck. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, pretty much every first dance. <laughs> Now, really? if I if obviously I got married and I just got our, I just got our DJ just to play the first dance. Yes. Like it's, it's just, we, we didn't have a band. We were just like we were just DJ. But there's some people that go, yeah, we've got um this song and it's it means so much to us and it's just so many things that just speak volumes and we just <laughs> love you to play this song. You think okay, we'll listen to it and it's like a four part harmony song in a really weird time signature with strings and violins and you're like. You know we're four lumps from Essex. So literally, <laughs> like, it's just we're not going to do your song any justice at all. Yeah, but we really just really want it to be live. And you're like, yeah, but no, it's going to sound shit. <laughs> like, yeah, but that's why we booked you because we know it's going to sound good. It's like, no, you're not listening, love. <laughs> but yeah, so there, there's I, I can't think, but there's been so many songs where and the thing is we where we live or where you know when we were doing it, yeah. <clears throat> um, we all lived our own separate lives you know so we, at the weekend we'd gig <clears throat> and then during the week we'd be just doing our own thing you know we'd either have part-time jobs whatever so we didn't have time to rehearse mm. so you used to rehearse on the way to the gig so you used to be like oh fuck we've got the first dance this weekend yeah let's listen to it yeah we'll be fine and you get on stage and you go yeah yeah but it's like oh shit but no I've, I've, to be fair I've never had a first dance that's gone bad it's one of those and we always had this saying <clears throat> and I stick by it and the saying is it will most probably be fine mm. and I've said that in everything when my first child has been born when I've broken down on the side of the road it's like, it will most probably, what's the, like it's most probably going to be fine 
everything's going to be fine. And it is. Like, it's just one of those things where you just go, well, we know the song. We're, we're lucky to be at that level of like musicianship where we're confident in ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know, providing we're all reading off the same page, you know, we're going to be fine. But yeah, I think there's not been a song that we've ever really ballsed up. Um, so yeah, we're, we're quite lucky in that sense, really. But yeah. yeah, first dances are generally the ones where uh, that, that makes you go, oh God. Because like, we, uh, if the bride and groom ask us for songs, uh, you know, it's like, oh, we really, again, you know, we really want this song. It's like, that's going to kill the dance floor a little bit. We don't think, we can DJ it for you, mm. you know, but when you, DJ versus a band is a very different thing. So when you've got a band, you just want banger after banger after banger. With a DJ, you can kind of take it or leave it. You know, you can go, oh, you're in a bar with your mate that you haven't seen for a couple of years. Go, oh, I like this one. Let's go, do it. Yeah. And then go back to the bar. Whereas with a band, you want to be on the dance floor the whole night, pretty much. So, yeah, you kind of, we pick and choose. In all the bands that I've played in and playing now, we kind of pick and choose a set list just because we know that that's what's going to work the best. Bride and grooms and clients, not just bride and grooms, but like clients think they know what would sound good, but we know that it wouldn't. Well, you're the artist, the publican, you know. Exactly. You yeah. know, it's all well and good when everyone's pissed up at half one in the morning singing Come On yeah. Eileen. Yeah. But it's a little bit different when it's done by a band, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. It. So, yeah. So, it's, it, it, it's just one of those things where you just have to trust the band. You have to trust the, the entertainment that you've booked because they do it week in, week out. So... Yeah. Have you found any problems with the? I mean, I'm sure you're not alone in this, but with the COVID restrictions, how did that affect the band? The whole the whole wedding industry was on its knees and still is on its knees now. Mm. Um, everything stopped. Um, it was a bit of a kick in the teeth when you could see, like this summer, for example, with Wembley. I mean, I'm a massive football fan, so for me, seeing England at Wembley was mm. incredible. But seeing 70,000 people hugging and kissing each other, yet weddings could still only have 30 people. It's like, what's going on here? Money. It's, well, it's yeah, that's it. But then it's still, you've still got these businesses, you've still got the Apton Halls, you've still got all these venues around the country, and there's thousands. You don't realise how many wedding venues there are. Just when the... You, yeah, and, you, and it's not just wedding venues. It's, it's caterers, it's wedding bands, it's videographers, photographers suit makers car hire the whole like there's and there's probably another 10 on top of that florists i mean i've, I've spoken to a few people about this problem like you said there's multiple different places that have been affected by this and um i, I can't feel for everybody enough because there's so many people that i know in different types of industries that have been affected by covid where you've got yeah you've got to stay in and now that it's on its knees it's hard to bring it back because people haven't got the confidence they can express themselves the way they want. It so is. You can only have 30, you can only do this, everyone's got to be double jabbed, everyone's got to be this, and it makes people fucking married. Yeah, What's the point? yeah, yeah. I, I think now it's got to the point where we've, we've, I've, I've been back out gigging again since, I don't know, May, June, I think, was my first kind of venture out, and that was, albeit out, it was like acoustic, so it wasn't like full band it was just acoustic guitar and shakers and things like that nice and relaxed which was good to kind of get yourself because everyone's got that kind of what's the word like that that fear of going out when it was like oh you can all go out again everyone was like i don't know if i want to (laughs) it's like i've been shopping with my mask on that's probably as far as i can go but actually like dealing with piss guests like and that's the other thing as well when you when you're in a situation like this you've and you've got your mic and the singer's singing mm. and then you get people come up and it's like living on a prayer or mr bright side and you get people come up and they grab the mic and it's like oh there's pissed uncle dave you know he's like Way! <laughs> down the mic three four years ago we didn't really worry about it no but now it's like if someone grabs your mic you're like fuck that's it we're canceling the gig like, fuck, don't, fuck, i'm not touching that mic ever again it's like, it only takes one person to video it stick it on I know. sharing mics with the public and yeah. all of a sudden you're shamed for being this COVID exactly. person and yeah. it's not the publicity that you want but what else can you do this is yeah. the environment that you work in you're going to have to expect this that's it so yeah so it was that that getting out there and uh, the, the fear of overcoming it really it's that, what's the word just that kind of yeah fear that, that anxious butterfly anxiety yeah. Just, yeah just everybody's felt it mate to be honest uh, the girls have probably experienced it a little bit more than me because I never got an opportunity to go into furlough or lockdown or anything because I was working throughout the whole bloody thing. Yeah. I still haven't stopped. So in my respects, I've just business as usual for me. Mm. But looking at upon everybody else's perspective of it, it's very, very difficult to bring yourself back 
from being basically shackled to your your, your house. Yeah. You're shackled to your house for like near enough two years. Everyone keeps saying, oh, it's only a year. It wasn't, it's 2019. It's near enough two years we've been living with this now. Mm. It's a massive strain on everybody in the country. And that's why I brought up the question of how obviously it's well, affected the band um, and everything. Good friend of mine who hopefully will watch it, uh, Richie. Hi, mate. Hello, uh, Richie. Um, <clears throat> he, bless him, I mean, he's set up, he's set up obviously the band. He's now like my best mate who messaged me 10 years ago about the band. Yeah. Um, so he set up the band. He's got like a photo booth hire company. He's had like donut walls. He's had magic mirror, all all sorts of stuff for that entertainment industry. And he had to get a job being an Amazon multi drop parcel delivery driver mm. thing. And it was just like, mate, this is not this is not right, you know. And then you fast forward a year, and you're now sort of you're in the summer of 2021. And you're like, well, everyone's getting jabbed. This, that, and the other, and it's like, well, Wembley's open again, and there's there's seventy thousand blokes kissing each other, and everyone's falling over, and the pubs are packed. Yeah, the wedding industry is to go. Oh, we can still only have thirty people, and it's like, why? It just the whole thing just doesn't make sense. But it's money. It's, it's got to be money. It is, isn't it? I'm not going to go into the whole COVID no, theories no, I, and I, else, but I don't expect. I, I just I say what I see. Yeah, like, like old catchphrase. So we see. So say we what see. you see. Yeah, that's it. There's Mister Chips. What's he doing? <laughs> He's not allowed out. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Chips. Bless him. So when we were speaking on the phone, uh, well, voice promoting each other the other day, yeah. you said that you had a, a story in mind that you wanted to bring up. Mate, about. there's, there's, there's there all... tons of stories. <laughs> and I, I've been quite fortunate where I actually, personally, I've only experienced a few really bad negative things at these weddings, you know, mm. like alcohol. The, the main problem is alcohol. If anyone didn't drink alcohol, weddings would be dull as fuck. They'd be like, nothing would happen. Everyone would just go, congratulations, cheers. <laughs> what do we do now? Oh, Mr. Brightside, yeah, oh, fuck, on <laughs> I was at a wedding last week. They played that last week. But yeah, so we'd, so something that I've seen, there was a wedding, and I remember the dates, but I don't remember the date, but I remember the situation. It was the day that Amy Winehouse died. Okay. I remember we were driving to the venue, and it broke, I'm like, breaking news, and it was all on our phone. We're like, fuck, Amy Winehouse is dead. Now, say what you think about Amy Winehouse. You know, it was... A sad loss anyway. Tragic. Great singer. Like, she, uh, but, uh, you know, she didn't help herself. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, so we turned up at this venue and everyone was like, the news was breaking. It was like, oh, fuck, but, you know, it's not like the Queen or anything. So everyone went, Amy Winehouse is dead. Oh, fuck, another beer, Dave? Yeah, go on in. Mm. And so, but everyone was talking about it. Anyway, so we, we set up and do the gig. And um, we found out while we were at this wedding that um, the bride, it was either the bride or the groom's dad had passed away two weeks before their wedding. So emotions are really high, and we we were setting up, and then they said, "Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do the speeches now." So we like had to sit there and endure these speeches. My God, I was I was crying. Really? It was just, like, I don't so know, it was just so emotional, like just them saying, "You know, Dad, we wish Dad would be here," and it was only like two weeks ago. So oh my God. So anyway, so I did that anyway. Fast forward to the end of the evening, and uh, we're packing away, and. I remember the car park was like a, like a really like massive gravelly car park and you could hear taxis pulling up and pulling out and cracking on. And then we could all this screaming and all this commotion. And um, both the mums, so the bride's mum and the groom's mum were just on the floor punching seven shades of shit out of each other. <laughs> and we were like, what's going on here? And they were literally, and she literally had the, whichever mum it was, was literally had her by the neck and was just banging her face, just like punch, punch. And the bride was saying, I'll go, Mum, stop it. And they, they pulled her up. And the bride was covered in blood. Oh, and the, one of the wow. mums, like, her nose was all split open. It's like, oh, congratulations. <laughs> we're uh, we're off now. <laughs> I was just saying, we're going now. And they're like, yeah, I'll see you later. <laughs> so there was that. I mean, that's, you know, that's that's one of those things where GFC you just... GFC in the car park, uh, great fighting championship. Man. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two, three, <laughs> yeah. he's out of here. So that was like, wow. You know, we got in the van. It was like, what a day, you know, you've just like Amy Winehouse and then we've just seen like two women just battering the shit out of each other but yeah so there's, there's two maybe three stories about uh, being in this function band world and the things you see and the stories you hear so fortunately I wasn't at any of I say fortunately I wish I wish I was at these <laughs> weddings but this is just some stories I've played so the first one was uh, I think it was based in Essex or Kent or it was quite local I'm sure someone could back me up here yeah um but it was in a massive marquee, like a big marquee on a field. Everyone was having a great time. The band were there, and like, congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, whatever. And the night goes on, right? And then, ladies and gentlemen, the buffet's open. Buffet comes out. Then the band go back on for the second set. 
And it gets about 11 o'clock. And everyone's having the best time. The dance floor's packed. The groom's got his cravat round his head. And granddad's on the floor windmilling with his blazer. Like, <laughs> everyone's having the best time. And there's absolutely no indication that everyone's kind of bored. Everyone's like, song after song, the crowd are there. And absolutely loving it. And um, all of a sudden, the dance floor just goes... It just clears. And everyone, like the band's like, your, your sex is on fire. What the fuck? What, we're playing sex on fire again? Oh, fuck it. <laughs> oh, yeah, the crowd. Yeah, forgot about them. <clears throat> but, um, and the crowd just vanished. And everyone was like, what the fuck? So the band sort of like, they, they finish their song. And everyone starts going to the bar. And everyone's sort of picking at the cheese and the crackers that's left. You know, like kids sort of go, oh, Brie. Oh, <laughs> and then they put that back. And then some piss bloke goes, oh, Brie. Woo. I've seen that, mate. The, the amount of regurgitating food is just like little five-year-old with a sausage roll. And it's a vegan sausage roll. And he goes, bleh, spits it back out. And then someone comes along and goes, Brie, it's food. Mate, any, any, anything beige to a piss head at one in the morning is like, oh, banging. Oh, dear. You've got to get some Snapchats of that. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the dance floor's like empty, and everyone's like, what the fuck's going on? And all of a sudden, they look down, and on the dance floor, there's just this massive steaming pile of poo. <laughs> no. And everyone was like, what? So it was like, they get to the mic, and they're can we have, um, normally you do like, uh, yeah, normally you get like a, a call out for bro broken glass on the dance floor. Ladies and gentlemen, mind your feet, ladies and gentlemen. It's like, there's it's shit on the dance floor. <laughs> so you had to get some poor little 18 year old who's just that, you know, she's just hired in for the night to work at the bar and she's yeah. pulled in. And there oh, she is yeah. with her little blue towel and she's <laughs> scooping up shit. And it's like, oh, what's going on? So that made um, mainline, like, main, like mainstream news. I remember it breaking out and I remember sitting on I think I was I was gigging but obviously not that gig and I was driving on the way home and it was like oh wedding guests reveal horror of poo on the dance floor <laughs> and it made news that night so it happened at like 11 o'clock at night by 1 o'clock it was actually on the BBC News app <laughs> oh stop it it I know. was it it was <laughs> it, it was like right yeah uh, Syria uh, uh, Amy Winehouse is dead uh, shit on the dance floor <laughs> So yeah, yeah. Oh, shit on the dance floor. <laughs> so there was that, um, and it turned out it was one woman on her own. There was a woman on her own. She wasn't even with anyone apparently. Oh no, she's so yeah, so skirt. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, oh, no. just oh, I feel a little bit of movement. Maybe I'll pop to the toilet. Now I'll tell you what, I'll just carry on dancing to Sex on Fire. Oh, oh, do you know what? I like the sound of as well. That it, like the it was like a school disco and everyone sort of party wise. No one took responsibility. I don't know what she did. I don't know if she stood there and admitted. I mean, why would you? You'd, you'd, you'd be that person going, oh, who's done that? <laughs> I'm just going to pop to the toilet. Yeah, go on then. Um, so there was that one. So it was uh, greatest shits on the dance floor. Um, and the second, well, well there, there is a third one, but we'll, we'll see how we're doing for time. <laughs> oh my God. But the second one is um, this couple have uh, hired this massive stately home. And... In the lobby, so you've got like the reception for the lobby, like where you check in. Yeah. Um, but they'd hired the whole hotel out, so no one was coming in, no one was checking in, checking out. So the whole, like the whole hotel was theirs. <clears throat> this bride and groom. Yeah, the amount of money that passes through weddings is just that's astronomical. That sounds like the hundreds of thousands. Yeah, yeah it's market, biblical. Really. It's yeah. crazy. And then, so again, the band, different band on the uh, like plane and. Uh, in, in where the lobby is, you've kind of got this stairwell in the middle of the lobby, and it kind of fans up and fans around, and you've got all these balconies. Oh, and you've got like all Disney these princess sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. So it kind of fans out. Yeah. And the band are playing, and they're they're literally opposite the stairwell, and then all of a sudden, again, the dance floor just slowly starts to dissipate, and everyone's slowly filtering away, and it was like, okay, well. we'll by the way, that's the drummer playing. I keep doing that. People go, what does he keep doing that? Has he got a nervous twitch? It's like, no, that's a drummer. That's a guitarist. That's a drummer. Left hand drummer. Um, not maracas. Olé! <laughs> um, so yeah, the band are playing and then everyone starts making their way to this stairwell and everyone's like, there's a lot of action around this stairwell and it's like, what's going on now? People are going up, people are going around to the balconies and then people are coming down, people are crying. I was like, what's going on? What's going on? And the band's like, we'll, we'll stop. You know, we'll put on a bit of background music. And uh, it turns out that the bride was caught with the best man in the bridal suite, oh. in the bed, at it, 
on their wedding night. Oh my god, that was like that's like sexual Cluedo, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That was the bride <laughs> and the best man. With yeah. the candlestick in the bedroom. The, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three. Um, yeah. So, uh, mate. So there was that, and what? that was just again. I was like, shall we call it a night? Oh it's my like, god. yeah, call it a night. Um, there must have been a ruckus then, surely. Oh, there was. Yeah, that was the thing. Like people were going up. Going, oh, what's going on here then? And then people were coming down with like broken noses and blood, and everyone was crying. It's like, I don't think I want to go upstairs. <laughs> but yeah, it was. Uh, so there was that. So uh, and again, you know that. So poo on the dance floor, <laughs> and the bride sleeping with the best man. I wouldn't advise it because it sexual, does sexual clodo. It does kill a wedding. <laughs> um, where, where was that? Are you allowed to say where? So where I don't was? know. Again, that was I, I wasn't there. Uh-huh. So I'm part of this like this group, and we've kind of on, on like WhatsApp. Well, I think it was Facebook. I don't, I don't know. But it started breaking out, and there was this other band relaying the account of the evening, and we were just like, oh my god, driving home, just like, jeez. So yeah, mate. There's there's been so. I mean, I've seen so many things over the years. Probably not as like grand as that, but no. there's been so many situations where you've seen like. I don't know. I, I did. I, did. <laughs> I can't name him. <laughs> so I can't name him. I can't name the band. I can't name where I was. But I was playing for a uh, professional footballer. Careful. Not, Careful. Not, not, Careful. Da- that's it. <laughs> we had a party. And we've done loads of these parties over the years. We've done loads of like celebrity things. And you get really starstruck. You're like, wow. Mm. And these people are all great. And this person was really great. It was a really nice guy or girl. Um and yeah, we 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 had to go a long way. Uh, again, I'm not gonna say the location. Yeah. Maybe it was north, maybe it was south. Yes. <laughs> um good thing we're in the middle, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sort of, yeah. yeah. I think London is considered north for us. Yeah, that's yeah, so. Um but yeah, so we, we did this event and it was just like a, a little private gathering mm. and there was security beyond belief like every corner you turn there was like just some big like dude just like yeah, on every door, pretty yeah much. pretty yeah. much <laughs> and uh, the night carried on and we again we did our first set and it was wicked and the, the 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 person who booked us was there and he was singing and he had loads of mates with him all from you know different walks of life different such, walks, yeah. yeah or different football clubs yeah and um and there was a group of them on stage and they're doing it and it's all kicking off. And I literally get my phone and I just go to film it. I was like, oh, this is a really good moment to share for our social media stories. And I put my phone up like that and this massive hand just suddenly goes. <laughs> and there's this bloke who's like six foot nine. He's like, put your phone away. I'm like, okay, no worries. And it was one of those things like whatever happens tonight is not documented. Mm. Whatever, whatever substance you may find on the toilets, you do not talk about it. Yeah. Or do, or don't. Yes. Mm. Mm. Um, <laughs> but I remember this bar was running, because they hired this bar in, and the bar was dry by like midnight. Wow. And this footballer was literally screaming at the young 19-year-old lad, just like, oh, we, I, I demand more alcohol, we need more alcohol. And it's like, well, we're not supposed to finish it like midnight or one o'clock, whatever. That's not good enough, I'm paying you extra. And he was actually screaming at this little 19 year old kid. Uh, so the kid got on the phone to his manager and was like, oh, so and so wants more stuff from behind the bar. And they actually ended up like doing it for him. They kept the bar going until like three, four in the morning. Probably frozen with it. Yeah, God, mate. Yeah. So, yeah, so that was that was quite interesting. But yeah, this, this, oh, mate, there's so many stories, but I just can't. I just can't say who it was because no, it was well, just. It's best that you don't, but it, it, gives every, <laughs> it's, it gives everyone a decent perspective of, mm. you know, when you are in a function band, there is some massive perks and there is some massive achievements that you can get. Like, hey, like you said, the, you're meeting celebrities and people from all walks of life. Yeah, man. Yeah. All right, you can't talk about it, but up here, that's where it matters. Yeah, yeah. Because you don't have to share everything on social media. No. Some of those, some of those feelings and some of those situations should be kept private. Some Absolutely, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. not everybody in the world needs to know everything that you've done. I mean, if I was to say everybody in the world what I've done, I'd put no one probably <laughs> like me. You know, so it's it's one of those things where you do have to obviously keep something back. Yeah. So the current band that you're all with at the moment is Swayze Nights. Is that right? Swayze Nights. Yeah, yeah. we are an eighties uh, themed party band so yeah we do everything 80s um yeah and and you're operating freely now without too many restrictions yeah no we've got october's quite busy we've got quite a few gigs coming up um some private some 
you know some public ones so yeah that's that's all happening so that's pretty cool um so where, where would people try and find Sway? Have you got your own website? Are you operating? Yeah, it's just only? social media, Instagram. Yeah, yeah I, don't know, I don't have a handle. Forward slash Swayze Nights. Try yeah. that. Try that. Um, but, but make yeah. sure you head over there. Obviously, if you've got any um, weddings or any functions, or, or you, I suppose you do work functions as well. You yeah, yeah, like anything, mate. And things like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so obviously hit up Swayze Nights for that. Make sure, especially Christmas coming up, I suppose you're going to be Absolutely. probably busy there. So. Yeah. Considering the amount of demand that these guys and girls are currently in, make sure you get over there and have a have a watch and yeah. listen, because I've had a few watches of the videos and it does look like yeah, people mate, it's, definitely enjoy the music. There's no uh, It's the eighties as well. Yeah. I think everyone loves the eighties. It's slowly going now. We find that it's going eighties slowly into the nineties now. Everyone's slowly going into the nineties. Mm. And everyone I, th- I think eventually, you know, there'll be that big demand. Everything's just kind of kind of be generational where you sort of go, oh nineties, maybe now two thousands and then but I mean, well, I can yeah. see it within my own daughter, the way she dresses, it's very much 80s. Oh, really? Clothes. Yeah, the, obviously up to date, she's not going to get any Biggie Jakey <laughs> stuff, you know, she's not that, she probably ain't got that much money either, you know, no, well, sure yeah, Biggie Jakey stuff's a few quid, but yeah. just the, the style with the, you know, the uh, college bomber jackets, not bomber yeah, jackets, yeah. college jackets, ripped jeans, yeah. you know, she likes loads of alternative music it's not like the fact that she's like an emo or grunger or house yeah. or hip hop or anything because yeah. that's one thing I've always taught my kids to have an open mind say kids I've only got one breaking news I've got another one no I haven't really <laughs> um, but having a music genre that's so wide doesn't inhibit you to other things because that's there's, it, man. there's yeah, festivals exactly. and there's like different concerts to go to um, always point at Live Aid with my little and yeah back the 80 the one freddy last one freddy done freddy yeah Murphy, yeah, 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 yeah. big queen fan love yeah, yeah you know uh watched the film got the book and everything else and uh i basically said look how many different artists are there yeah look how many people don't leave the arena yeah it's like like you said some tunes people are not into but when you're in that concert environment, everyone's loving the situation. It's not just the music, it's the atmosphere that you're in. So you've got Mate, to Mate, hundred percent, yeah. And this is the thing as well. I was thinking the other night, I was watching that um oh, what's it called? That people just do nothing. Have you watched that? No, I've been, that's the the chaps in the tower block, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, I haven't watched it. No. But it just takes me back to like our childhood mm. and that like garage and all that was like huge, like the garage thing. And I I, I don't think I would have liked it, but because of the like the circle of friends I was in, like you and like everyone else. It's mm. kind of, I just listened to it and then I ended up, I fucking ended up with a pair of decks. Oh my, like, I can't DJ for shit. What am I doing with this? So one minute I'm listening to Slipknot with like Charlie and all that. Yeah, you were, were in the background, weren't you? Charlie, Dave and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. And then, yeah. and then yeah. I was listening to Garage and all that and then it was just like the normal rock stuff. So I, I think that's absolutely 100%. Like whether, where this is going, I don't know, but you know, obviously, just talking about music in general, mm. it's just so good not to pigeonhole yourself, you know. Because yeah. I don't think people do now. I think, like, I don't know, I think I it's know. so. It used to be big when we were kids, like, you were, you were with the garage oh, guys, mate, yeah. you were with the grunge guys, yeah. you were with this, you were with that, you know, oh, that's crap music. This, and yeah. hopefully, because of the birth of YouTube and obviously Spotify and all of those other media platforms, it's given everybody that situation. Don't, never heard of that person before. That's fucking No, good. mate, that's it. And I've, I, I sit there with, Spotify sometimes, and I'm I'm 35 now, so I think I'm at the age now where I can go, what's this shit? What's, what's, this? <laughs> what's this? This is awful. And I sit there and I, I listen to some stuff that comes out, and I just think this is dreadful. Mm. Like rewind 20 years ago, I remember my mum and my our, our parents going, what's this? This is dreadful. And we're like, oh, shut up, mum, you're so cool. But fast forward, and we're here now going, this is dreadful. But I, I don't know. It just seems to be that music is. It's, there's just so many artists now. Mm. That's the thing. There, there used to be so many artists, but obviously we didn't know they were there. And now with like the, the launch of streaming and YouTube and everything else, there just seems to be like new artists popping up. If someone held a gun to my head and went, name me the top ten now, I'd be yeah. like, not yeah, a clue. Should, um, should be dead. Ed Sheeran, probably. Um, Dua Lipa, maybe. Nicki Minaj has got to be up there, isn't she? She's always up there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, so do you know what I mean? Like it, it's kind of music has changed so much, and it's I don't know whether it's good or bad. It's I've I've only really found it with hip hop. That's the one thing that's I was massively into back yeah, in the yeah. day. Nowadays, not so much. Um, I'm more of a funky house type of guy. Yeah. Um, only because of wife, I'd never been to any sort of house or hard house event at all. Right. And she took me to the Camden Palace, which is now called Coco. Yeah. 
and my god i had the best time of my really? life yeah absolutely they had this and this is going back like 10 15 years now so no doubt it's changed but as you come as you went through the doors at the Camden palace it sort of opened up into like an arena sort of not, not an arena um like a theater so, so you yeah. could walk around in certain levels yeah she left me on me told well actually i buggered off on me told and i went on the dance floor because i wanted to see what it was all about <laughs> well anyway uh, i could give you three guesses what i was doing that evening i'm not going to mention <laughs> yeah. what i was doing but i was having a great time yeah and all of a sudden they had this light show on and they had this drape hanging from the middle of the ceiling and the tunes were banging it was brilliant and all of a sudden the light show put on the seven up guy right, right. so it's yeah, a seven yeah. up guy and body popping oh yeah 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 and yeah. i've never seen anything so spectacular off my box <laughs> in my life it was brilliant and that just opened up my eyes a little bit to another sort of walk of life thanks to the wife yeah walk of life, thanks to the wife uh, hey yes yeah, so you're course. a poet yeah, you don't I'm, know it uh, yes well I, i've actually had a couple of poems published have you as a child yes yeah the old <laughs> children one but you had a, uh what do we call it a primary school yeah yeah. you used to write a poem and like a few of the classmates used to have some published and i had a couple oh i did as well yeah it's like oh shit <laughs> to be honest i think it was a pity but yeah, i can't put him in he's all right he's done well he's done well Right, so I'll leave it there, my man, because uh, I think that we've gone on for what is it, forty-one minutes? Four hours. Four hours, not quite, not quite. But we've all got lives to lead. I've got to go to work, and I'm sure yeah. you've got to get back to the wall. Yeah, I've got things. to go do the washing up. Yes, you got it. You said you. you know, I won't say what you said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yes, no, I won't do it. No, just yeah, he's a good boy. He is. He is. He's a good boy. And um, yeah, so again, we've obviously plugged the Swayze Nights thing. Is there any any dates that you want to plug that are coming up that have got tickets or places uh, that are available? I can't really remember. Um, no. When the video goes up, I'll jump on the link and I'll put the links up. Perfect. We'll do that. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Because it's all public events, just pubs. So you just rock up and just have a dance, have a boogie. That's what we want. Take it back to the 80s. Yeah. Wear your best shell suits and all that. Enough. Well, yeah. I suppose they do still do make them nowadays, don't they? They do. Yeah. yeah. Sure, so, so. yeah. Well, a little bit more up to date. But yep. it's been a pleasure to have you on, on, mate. And no doubt I'll have you back at some point as well. Thanks for having me. No, it's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, it's been so long. So I, I want to make this obviously something a little bit more continuous because I can see you guys going far with the talents that you've got. So well done. Pleasure. Thanks, mate. All right. Have yourselves a lovely day. Thank you. Good night. Much love from the Social Monkey and Nathan Meadows. All the best. Bye. Bye. Bye.